Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we've got a massive mesoscale convective system bringing up to hurricane force wind gusts and even a possible derecho forming along with the heat dome really starting to build as the monsoon rains come back and even some snow. Good morning, everyone. How's it going out there? Hope everyone had a fabulous weekend. If you are new to the channel and do like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it this morning and take a look at the overall satellite picture on the broader perspective to tell you what's really happening out there. As you can see, we've got this massive heat dome really building down south. We've got numerous record high temperatures are gonna be unfolding later on today. But just to the north of that, we've got this massive mesoscale convective system. It's gonna be traversing east, southeast along this boundary this morning, bringing very high winds and even a possible derecho trying to form. But underneath that, we do have a little bit of instability down here into the Caribbean, where the National Hurricane Center does have a 20% chance of this trying to form in some sort of tropical entity. But we also have another convection down here into the Pacific that actually has a 90% chance of developing. I do feel that is going to be developing into a, a named system. But more importantly, as this high pressure really starts to deepen and actually moves further off into the east, this is gonna allow a weakness in the ridge and it's gonna open the door, <laughs> open the door for a monsoon flow by the time we get into the weekend and bringing much needed rain for the desert southwest. So that is definitely on the table. But between now and then, We've got a lot of heat to deal with. Man, we got numerous. I mean, check out the hazard map this morning. Widespread excessive heat warnings in the desert southwest. I mean, all this orange blob here is just packed with heat advisories from Texas all the way up into Wisconsin, getting into Kentucky with dangerous heat index levels approaching over 100 degrees. Those areas into the pink shaded area, that is your excessive heat warnings where we're talking 110 plus potential heated heat advisories today. So, man, all these, again, just excessive heat warnings, excessive heat watches for a good chunk along this ridge here. But just to the north, huh, look at that. We've got some cold air to talk about, even some freeze warnings out here into Nevada. But up to the north, where all the unsettled weather has been with these just progressive systems coming off the Pacific Ocean, we're still doing what those flash flood watches up here into portions of Idaho, even into Montana. But hey, it's going to be cold enough. Huh. This little pink shaded area, this little purple shaded area. Yeah, that is winter storm warnings, guys. They're expecting four to eight inches of snow up there, about 6,000 feet elevation and higher up into Montana. So hey, if you want to escape the heat, all you got to do is head to the northwest. And even in Montana, we're going to be seeing a lot of snow going to be flying over the next uh, couple of days. So let's check out the temperatures this morning because you really don't have much relief. That's why they've got the heat advisories in place because the temperatures really don't even drop that much in the nighttime hours. This is a, at six o'clock in the morning on June 13th here. We've got upper 70s in Texas and Oklahoma, but even some 87. That is crazy. That is crazy high for a low temperature up here in Kansas. So that is the indicative of the, you're just you just don't even cool down at night as this ridge dome, this heat dome really starts to build. But it's just the complete opposite out here into the Pacific Northwest, widespread 40s and 50s and even 30s showing up on the map. And that winter storm warning starts about six o'clock tonight that goes into Wednesday for portions of Montana where they are expecting several inches of snow. But you can definitely see the setup uh, along this uh, ridge. I mean, it's basically, you know, just to the north of there. So you've got this these ridge rider effects. So you got this massive heat dome down here to the south. You've got all this instability. You got this little buckle in the jet stream pulls down the colder air, right? And that allows for the atmosphere to snow up in the higher elevations. 
but that's going to be creating the lift as it packs into this heat from the southwest winds and create all that instability that's why they've got the storms blowing up in minnesota today and going to be traversing east southeast or really a kind of along this boundary here that we could be looking at numerous widespread showers and thunderstorms and really start to congeal into a massive mesoscale convective system. So this is my concern this afternoon, and I will be going live for this event about 11 o'clock this morning. So definitely stay tuned for that and turn all the notifications on. So right now we've got a slight risk for severe storms in Minot, getting into Dickinson, back into Bismarck, up here into Grand Forks, into Fargo. This is going to be traversing down east, southeast, along this boundary. These They call them kind of ridge rider effects. Just to the north of that boundary, right along that warm front, we could be looking some serious storms really starting to blow up in this atmosphere. And this is the wind threat as we get into the afternoon. And they do have that hatched risk for those potential 75 mile per hour wind gust or greater into portions of Madison, getting into portions of the Chicago area, maybe into Langsing, getting near Detroit. Detroit into Toledo, Ohio, and even as far reaching into Pittsburgh as we get into the evening time frame. But it could still be pretty bumpy this afternoon in Cincinnati and in the Indianapolis area as this just massive convective system really starts to get its act together. So here's a setup this morning at about eight o'clock this morning. This is what the radar looks like right now. We've got some showers and storms into portions of Washington, getting into Idaho as well as Montana. You can actually see these little blue marks. <laughs> That's the snow, right? I showed you the temperatures. Temperatures dropping, jet stream buckles. That allows the colder air to funnel down further to the south and boom, you've got a lot of lift over 6,000 feet in the atmosphere and we got snow. <laughs> we got snow flying in the, in the mountains there. But out ahead of it, man, we've got all that system, that blow up convection this morning over into Minnesota, down further to the south, we've got all that system creating uh, some uh, supercell thunderstorms in portions of Iowa this morning. And as this moves off into the east southeast during the you know afternoon time frame, this is about two o'clock, right? So we could be looking at a kind of a massive squall line this straight line wind effect i mean this is kind of coming in with a vengeance and gonna hit you hit you with the, like a ton of bricks gonna be nice day and boom about a one to two hour punch massive squall line comes in 60 70 80 even portions maybe 90 miles an hour not out of the question today as this massive convective system will be really moving across it could be over milwaukee area about two o'clock this afternoon maybe portions into chicago as this really starts to dive and really start to expand as we get deeper into the afternoon hours so yeah, about six, seven o'clock time frame. It could be over portions of Toledo, getting into Cincinnati, maybe into Dayton, into Columbus area. As this continues to move off, it'll be maybe Indianapolis a little bit before then, maybe five o'clock this afternoon. And this will really start to get, you know, get again, move east, southeast into the overnight hours, affecting the Pittsburgh area, eventually heading off until tomorrow morning, impacting portions of West Virginia, getting into the Baltimore area, into the D.C. area. So as you wake up trying to head off to work, those could be some serious storms going to be impacting your commute. But look at all the snow, right? That's all the snow that's flying now with that winter storm warning in effect for portions of Montana there. But out ahead of it, we got plenty of heat and that's why they've got those widespread heat advisories, excessive heat watches, excessive heat warnings. We're talking, these are heat index values approaching 110 degrees for the Illinois area. That is some serious stuff. But you can see just to the north of that, right? I mean, that's 74 degrees, right? That's where all the rain is going to be. That's where all the instability is going to be. So there's a sharp gradient. <laughs> there's a very sharp gradient along this ridge that you're going to be hit with, you know, widespread record heat and then, you know, dangerous heat advisories. And just to the north of that, where you get that cool down with that massive squall line comes through, you're gonna be much cooler underneath that uh, squall line. But there's the snow. I mean, these are, these are feels like temperatures. We even talking possible a wind chill <laughs> out here into Idaho, into uh, Montana this afternoon. 
But there's this, there's the concern, because here's the wind threat on the latest convection models of the HRRR. And man, look at that. I mean, it looks like a, a definitely a wind threat, even a, a mesoscale convective system with even a possible derecho form. And if it elongates over 240 or even possible 400 miles this afternoon, but it's a basically a straight line window threat with some tornadic supercells maybe at ahead of it and with some larger hail as well but main threat is going to be your damaging winds and right now this latest i actually output at max is at about a hundred miles an hour so definitely be on high alert if you are in that zone where they do have that slight risk and especially into the indiana area into ohio area getting into west virginia uh, you know, you know, Mi Mi Wisconsin getting into Michigan, those areas are going to be under the gun this afternoon with that high wind threat. But as we go into Tuesday, there's that mesoscale convective system going to be setting up shop over portions of Richmond, getting into Virginia Beach area, back into Jacksboro or the Raleigh area, Wilmington area. Those areas are going to be waking up to that mesoscale convective system overhead and that will eventually push offshore in the open waters of the atlantic but yeah wait there's more we've got another con convective complex really starting to take shape over portions of grand forks area back into fargo again again that ridge really doesn't go anywhere we just have convective systems moving you know right across and we could have more storms starting to blow up in the afternoon time frame but back behind it, it's complete opposite. There's the snow. I mean, we're talking upwards to 12 inches of snow in portions of Montana. It just gets crazy as you get higher up in the mountains with feet of snow. So yeah, it's still cold enough. We're still talking about snow for the middle of June and underneath that. Uh, so it's you know it's a widespread difference of, of where you live in the country of what you're gonna be getting with a massive heat dome, widespread storms, and then cooler conditions off the Pacific Northwest and then the snow will fly into portions of uh, Montana there but as we get into Wednesday huh, we got another system moving across and we could be having a more a little bit more of a buckle effect too where these storms could really start to be packing a punch again and now the same areas back into Des Moines maybe back into Madison again back into Greens Bay, uh, Green Bay area as we do have a slight risk and even then I think it might even be elevated again traveling around north of that ridge east to southeast and those get back into possibly Pittsburgh again getting back into Richmond back into Raleigh so these little same areas are going to be hit today could be hit again to, on Wednesday time frame because we've got a pretty massive upper level system that's going to be moving across you can actually see where you know where the actual uh you know the low pressure will be that's where the snow will be flying you know tuesday into wednesday but by the time we get into wednesday that surface low will be to the north and underneath that we've got a lot of lift in the upper levels so the the winds are going to be crazy high 92 miles an hour of the knots oh that's over 100 miles an hour in the upper atmosphere so the area is going to be has a lot of lift in the atmosphere and just underneath of that huh, that's the ridge of high pressure that's a lot of sinking air underneath that it's almost next to impossible to have rain in this type of atmosphere under that just massive heat dome that really will be a building you know th throughout the week so but as we get deeper so roy hey pal where's where's the rain you know where's the rain and you've been talking about this monsoon you've been talking about the rains coming back in arizona and new mexico just wait it's coming not until really friday afternoon so your work week's going to be dry but but uh, by the time we get into say friday night time frame boom you got that system that's probably going to be a storm by then out here into the open waters of the pacific but as the ridge continues to kind of deepen over the east that allows a weakness underneath and boom that's going to create more a little bit more monsoonal flow and bringing much needed and welcome precipitation back into the desert southwest we're talking arizona we're talking new mexico we're talking utah those areas have been bone dry for months <laughs> for months and then you're going to have much needed rains coming back and they just intensify you know as we get into father's day weekend especially heading into the sunday and then early the following week next week 
Yeah, with steady stream of moisture coming in, this is exactly what you need. Just kind of bits and spurts of rain showers, nothing too severe or anything like that. But hey, we could be looking at much needed rain coming back for the desert southwest and even the extended view, right? So we go from, you know, this weekend from the 18th through the, say, the 22nd time frame. When's the last time you saw that on a map, right? Above average rains for the Four Corners regions? <laughs> that hasn't happened in months, okay? So it's almost the complete opposite of what you've been seeing with all these above average rains that have been taking place out here has kind of shifted. <laughs> so we got welcome rains definitely coming back for the quarter Four Corners region, and it really doesn't end there. So it's the beginning stages of monsoon season, so it's gonna be starting right on time essentially june 15th as we get into the weekend we could be looking at you know again above average rain really starting to build over time as we head into next week so here's kind of the breakdown so this is your work week from now until maybe friday night time frame you can see not much to speak of right not much to speak of for the desert southwest everything's just north of that ridge just north of that ridge along this pacific flow and then boom traveling east to southeast around this ridge bringing multiple inch rains over the coming days and you can definitely see down further south where we have that 20 percent instability down here in the caribbean it's been fairly dry in jamaica it's been actually fairly dry in the cayman islands as, as well but it's been fairly wet in the yucatan but i think that's actually going to change as we get more of a, a tropical type entity trying to form i don't think it's going to be too much of a concern for the u.s but it's going to bring elevated rains back into the caribbean places like jamaica places like the cayman islands heavier rains will spread into the yucatan and probably with this massive heat dome over texas this whatever tr whatever tries to form out of the tropics will be well south heading into Me mexico but the main important thing is a lot of the energy gets pulled into the pacific and actually gets pulled to the north and have that monsoonal flow so you can definitely see boom there is the much needed rains coming back that but that won't start until essentially friday night and into this weekend and heading into next week uh, this is the overall 10 day average for the rainfall amounts for the next uh, 10 days so hey i appreciate you guys uh watching do turn on notifications i will be going live about 11 o'clock central standard time central daylight time today so definitely stay tuned for that and catch me the next update where i protect you before and after storm